Now, obviously, we have single time ideas. And we have double time ideas. But have you taken the time to work on this other way of conceptualizing the subdivision of your lines? Today, we're looking at how to use triplets as the basis for your moving lines, and how doing so can not only improve your time overall, but can also give you a better grasp on how to play the changes. What's up, everyone? Good to see all of you today. Today, we're talking about rhythm. I would say that rhythm is one of the sometimes more overlooked things about our playing. It is equally, if not more important than note selection. We spend a lot of time working on note selection, right notes, right chords, all this type of stuff. But if your rhythm is not relatively developed, all the time you invest working on those good note choices, working on building melodies is going to be for nothing because your time might not be solid, your feel might not be developed. You might not just have enough different rhythmic ideas to build a great solo. So that's what we're going to talk about today is some other avenues we can go to help sort of like broaden the directions that we can choose for rhythms, particularly in moving lines. This week's lesson is hopefully going to be a little on the shorter side. We're really only going to talk about two exercises to work on. One of them is very, very simple, but foundational. The other one is a little bit more complex. So let's start with the easy one first, because that's when you can really put into practice like today. Now, as I mentioned, we're talking about triplets. You know, we all play eighth notes as a moving line kind of subdivision. We might play 16th notes if we're playing double time triplets and getting triplets into our playing is a great way to just give us other options and it's also a really good way if you want to change things up but maybe the tempo is getting a little bit fast to actually play double time you know if you get kind of like above 140 160 double time starts to become pretty tricky so you got to have some other avenues you can go so today we're really talking about triplets and this first exercise is going to be just that it's really just going to be triplets you could do this on any scale we're just going to use a c major scale today as the example and we're gonna alternate measures and changing the articulation. For this sort of triplet way of playing to work, at least the way we're gonna talk about it today, it's really important that you can not only play triplets as triplet, 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 but you can also play them triplets, but with two notes sort of like little groups in there. So in rather da 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 we get da 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 So this kind of two over three or four over three feeling. Really important to the second exercise we're going to do. So to practice this, you're going to want to choose a metronome marking. I would really encourage you to start relatively slow. The example is at 100 beats a minute, but you know, start down at maybe 70 beats a minute, something like that, so you can really lock in the time. That is the goal with this first exercise, and we are going to alternate playing measures. The first measure is going to be just triplets, triplet, 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 da, on the first note of the scale. So in this case, it's going to be C major. So the second note of the scale, the D, we are going to do that every two note accent pattern. So rather than triplet, 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 we're going to get da 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 da. So we get that two note grouping. Let's hear what this would sound like with a metronome, just straight up ascending through the scale. Um, I do have a couple of breaths in there, at least the way I'm playing it. So I put like a quarter note every two bars just so I can grab a breath. <laughs> This sort of practice is indispensable if you want to get this aspect of your playing together. It's really difficult to move this stuff into lines, whether you're just playing like regular triplet lines, or particularly if you're doing this little two note grouping thing, which we're going to talk about in a second. Very difficult if you have not invested some foundational practice time. So just make this part of how you practice scales. It's great articulation practice. It's great time practice. When you're with a metronome and you're feeling those two note groupings, you will not feel the downbeats always on the accent. They'll be sort of like every couple of beats. In this case, it'll be on beat one and beat three where you actually connect to a downbeat where you're also accenting the note. So really look for those downbeats to kind of keep yourself in the right place. Once you've got a little progress there, try to alternate these a little bit quicker. So rather than going uh, every other measure, every two beats would be the next direction to go. So you're gonna go da 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 and so on and so forth. You'll have to build in some breaths. I have a little short example here just so you can hear what it sounds like, but if you're going all the way up in the scale, you might have to add an extra beat 
or uh, rest on a certain beat, just to make sure you have air to make it through the entire scale. All right, that's the foundational stuff. You got to spend some time there. To actually move this into some music, let's look at a real meat and potatoes type of line that we might play. So that is an incredibly foundational 2-5-1. We're just connecting between the thirds of the chords, kind of moving through the scale. Very, very typical type of idea. Now we want to move this into triplets. So to do this, this is the second exercise I referenced. We first want to identify where our sort of chord tones are and where we have the key resolution points. So in this lick, we start on the third, um, the F natural. We are on a 2-5-1 to C here. And so it's a D minor chord. So we go from the third down to the nine, to the root of that chord. So making sure we think about that on beat one, we're on the root, beat two, excuse me, beat one, we're on the third, beat two, we're on the root, and then we resolve to the third of the next chord, the G7 chord. And then again, we have a seventh to third resolution on the and of four to the downbeat of one um, to that C chord. That's what's really important is those key moments, what is going on in this lick. Now, this is where the tricky part happens is when we're doing all these triplets with these little two note groupings, we're actually gonna think that each one of those two note groupings is now like a downbeat essentially. So we're no longer gonna feel those chord tone resolutions on beat one, beat two, and beat three. We're gonna feel it on beat one, obviously, but then we're actually gonna feel that next resolution point on the third triplet of the first beat because that's gonna be our second set of two notes. So I've got a little music on the screen here highlighted in red about where those resolution points would be. So that just kind of shifts where everything is. You're gonna have to manipulate this idea a little bit to make it work and resolve in the way you want to. It's gonna to help to create some interest in your lines, but also really test whether you have good control over using things like enclosures, over things like um, approach notes. They're essential to being able to use this sort of approach to manipulate these baseline ideas and turn them into something maybe a little more interesting. Now, I might not actually be resolving in those key places. Like for example, on beat one, I'm still gonna start on the F, the third, which we said was our starting point. But in that second place where I might be hitting a quote unquote chord tone or resolution point or a downbeat in these triplets, uh, I might not actually go to the D natural. It, it's all gonna depend on the individual line and sort of how you can finesse the line with a couple extra notes because now we have one, two, three, four, five, six resolution points or six sort of downbeats, temporary downbeats when we're feeling these triplets in a measure instead of just four. So you're gonna to have to add some extra notes in there. And that's really where the finesse happens. So our line is now going to sound like this. If we take a look at that, you can see again, I still have that F on the downbeat. Now I did actually, looks like I went to the D on that second you know, temporary or sort of theoretical downbeat in these triplets since we're doing these two note groupings, the second set of two notes. And then I have a little enclosure going into the G natural on beat three. The, the G natural still lands on beat three because there is still a downbeat there in both four, four and when we're feeling these triplets. If that seems a little confusing, just check out this lick with these highlighted um, chord tones on it. Those resolution points happen in very similar places. I'll, I'll put um, both of those back to back so you can see it in 4-4 and then see it with this triplet subdivision. You kind of see how those things line up with each other. So there's our licks together and you can see a couple places where I had to make a change. Obviously, like I said, I made those approach notes going into the, um, the third of the G natural chord, A to A sharp to uh, B natural. You might even say that's an enclosure because I started on the C before there. Uh, but then leading into the third of the C chord, I also have a couple of extra passing notes. Again, two half steps below, resolving to E natural. And then on the top of this lick, I have a little chromatic enclosure around the C. Now, the better you get at this, the more you can just do this in an improvised way. But at first, I would 100% recommend that you write this out, almost like you're composing a new idea with this different sort of rhythmic palette. If you just try to do it kind of improvising at first, it might be challenging. You may be able to do it, but it more than likely will be difficult. So you really need to like write out a couple of these, kind of figure out how you can manipulate ideas that you already play, whether it's a two, five, one, whether it's sort of a blues idea, whether it's a, a diminished dominant idea, it doesn't really matter, but many things can be manipulated to fit into this way of thinking, but I would highly encourage you to write it out and then try to put it on your horn. That is where you'll find success. Now, I mentioned that this approach can not only help broaden the kind of rhythmic choices we can make, but it actually can improve our time and can improve our ability to play changes. 
playing subdivision in this way, doing this two over three or four over three idea is relatively challenging. So if you work this with a metronome using that first very basic rhythmic and articulation example we started with, and then moving that into some actual melodic ideas, it's really going to help to test whether you really have control of feeling a steady pulse and not rushing or dragging. Focus on connecting to downbeats on beat one and beat three, because even when you have these two note groupings, da 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 da, you're still gonna get to a downbeat on beat one and beat three. And I would even encourage you maybe conduct, you know, conduct a four pattern to give yourself that little bit of physical representation of da 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 da. And don't really worry about the syllable. I'm just saying da just to, to keep it easy. I'm really trying to emphasize though, da 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 da, I'm kind of bouncing off that first note. The second note is almost ghosted, but really focusing on getting to beat one and beat three, staying in the right place. That's gonna really lock everything in, which is what you want from a rhythmic standpoint. In the same way this is sort of a test for a rhythm, it's a really great test for whether you have control over enclosures and approach notes. These are absolutely indispensable when you're working on this kind of stuff because you're gonna to have to add some extra notes into these lines to kind of like make them work and finesse the lines you already play into working in this triplet subdivision. You need enclosures, you need passing notes, you need chromaticism. It's going to really help you learn hopefully about how to resolve things in an interesting way, but also gonna kind of teach you new lines that are, I hate to say more interesting, but definitely have more complexity to them, which can sometimes be good for us as players. So that's it for today. This is a relatively deep dive. Even though those are two very, very simple exercises, or really one of them is simple, one of them is a little more complicated. This is something that you seriously will need to work on for a minute before it lands in your playing. I wouldn't say that I have complete mastery over this. This is a technique that I feel like I use fairly regularly. I'm relatively good keeping the time together when I do it, but there was a period where I seriously practiced this every single day for like six months, just working on keeping that subdivision going accurate and then moving ideas into this triplet sort of grid that you're creating. Now, there are probably certain things I'm sure I go to, you know, my kind of go-to ideas with this, um, so see if you can develop, you know, kind of a palette or a bag of things that are together in this way And then you'll have that rhythmic different tool at your disposal when you're looking for something that isn't just regular time Maybe isn't double time quite yet or on a faster tune where double time is really difficult Hopefully this can give you a different direction to go. All right. We'll see you in the woodshed